Good evening, and welcome to BBC Parliament. Now we join Anthony Howard as he looks back to 1959 in Never Had It So Good. <laughs> What do you want if you don't want money? What do you want if you don't want gold? Say what you want and I'll give it you, darling. Wish you wanted my love, baby. Good evening. Adam Faith extolling the spirit of avarice. And with that, we welcome you to our look back to 1959, a year when, at the age of 25, I happened to be a young political reporter on the Manchester Guardian. I covered the election campaign in the West Country and in the North West. My clearest memory is the night that the Prime Minister, Howard Millen, came to Bellevue in Manchester and gave a tremendously mammon live speech. It was quite an occasion. I got into terrible hot water because I wrote a sketch that my editor took exception to. The late 1950s represented a time of emerging prosperity for Britain. For the first time, green shoots of post-war economic recovery were sprouting. Many people were experiencing a disposable income for the first time. This optimism for the future was captured by Macmillan in a speech he gave in 1957 and was forever thereafter misquoted as having said, you've never had it so good. Tonight, we'll look back to a very different Britain of 50 years ago with help from the BBC archive. What issues dominated the politics of the day. How did people feel about their politicians and their daily lives? Had they really never had it so good? Oh, what do you want if you don't want money? What do you want if you don't want gold? Say what you want and I'll give it you, darling. Wish you wanted my love, baby. Nineteen fifty nine brought with it a general election. The Conservatives had come to power in nineteen fifty one, won again in nineteen fifty five, and now it was up to the Prime Minister, Hal Macmillan, to win the magical third term. It was, as it happens, his first and last election as party leader. People felt prosperous, wages were up, inflation was down, and in a slightly opportunistic move, the price of beer was cut by two pence in the 1959 budget. The Conservatives undoubtedly had the upper hand going into the election. It was an election largely fought on materialism. It was just before it that I bought my first motor car, a second-hand Ford Prefect, so I too was an investor in this consumer revolution. <laughs> Following the Second World War, national building programmes were undertaken to replace bombed-out streets and tenement slums with modern social housing. During the Conservative years of the 1950s, an average 245,000 housing units were built each year. Compare this to the average 130 units built each year of the 21st century. Macmillan could take pride in this achievement as the 59 election drew near. In Birmingham, vast areas of the Victorian city were cleared and redeveloped for the bright new world of tomorrow. Indeed, Birmingham city centre has since been built and rebuilt several times in keeping with its civic motto of forward. In this short film from February 1959, Douglas Jones follows a Birmingham family from the slums to their brand new 20th century home.
You are a member of the housing department, Birmingham, and it's your job to look after the interests of tenants in this part of the city. Now, what happens to a family like Mrs. Bolger's that has to move from her home because of slum clearance? We try to warn them the previous year that their houses are due for demolition. Then, nearer the time, we come and take particulars of their family, of the rent they can pay, the sort of district they like to go to, and then we do our very best to find them accommodation that will be suitable, where they will be happy. Uh, do most people cooperate with you, even the cat? Yes. Well, on the whole, people accept the fact that they've got to move. Sometimes there are difficulties when we can't give them just exactly what they want. When you find people a new home, how long do you give them to make up their minds? We usually let them have the keys for 24 hours so that both husbands and wives can go to view. And what happens if they don't like the first house you show them? We then make them a second offer, possibly even a third. Would it be possible to give them a choice of two homes at once in the first place? Well, that, I think, does raise some administrative difficulties. Possibly you ought to take that up with Mr Macy, the housing manager. Mr Macy, you are the City of Birmingham housing manager. That's right. Ms Matthews has told me what happens to a family who have been <coughs> because of slum clearance. But can you tell me why you offer them only one house instead of two in the first instance? Well, we already know a great deal about their uh, choice of future housing because we've been discussing it with them for several months. And uh, over here we've got 100,000 houses managed by my department so that we, we've an infinite variety of alternative accommodation to offer to them, <laughs> from very old houses to the very latest modern flat. And the other point about it is that, that if I get a new block handed over with 30 flats in today, tomorrow, 30 people can be viewing uh, their new accommodation. But if I were to give each of them two keys, only 15 families could view, and that, I'm afraid, would slow our work down very considerably. One must admire the drive and enthusiasm of the housing department, but in a vast organisation like that, is there any danger of it becoming an inhuman juggernaut? Yes, we, we are well aware of this danger in all big organisations, and. Uh, probably the, the best safeguard against it is a, a, a well-trained staff of housing visitors who take a really keen interest in their job and in the families with whom they're dealing. That's very interesting, Mr Macy. Now, do you go back after the tenants have moved and study their needs so that you can record them for future building purposes? Oh, yes, that's a process that's going on all the time. Uh, people working on the estates pick up information about tenants' likes and dislikes, uh, gadgets that work and don't work, and... Uh, we have the very closest liaison with the city architect and Sir Herbert Manzoni. I meet them two or three times a week, so that we are always passing this information on to them. Sir Herbert Manzoni, you are city engineer and surveyor, and you're responsible for redevelopment and replanning in the city. Yes, that is so. Now, what was the size of Birmingham's housing problem after the, after the war? Well, we lost 20,000 houses in the whole of the city due to bombing. But that wasn't the most important problem. The real problem was the problem of derelict houses, obsolescence, houses that had passed beyond their, uh, their uh, useful life. And uh, they're mostly concentrated in the center of the city. And what did the city do about this problem? Well, the city decided to deal with it in a very comprehensive manner. They, uh, they decided to buy the whole of the areas you see there, amounting to about 1,400 acres. And they got permission to do that under the Act of 1944, which was known as the Blitz and Blight Act. The Blight part is the interesting one, because these are derelict areas of slums long past the standard. And they decided to pull them all down and rebuild in their place what amounts to five small towns within the city area. Uh, this one at the bottom, Bath Row, is uh, one which is developed fairly well up to the present time and where um, Mrs. Bolton and her family are moving to. What is the broad pattern for completing the redevelopment? Well, there are more slums in the central areas than you see there. Uh, those black patches on the map um, show where about 25,000 more houses of a slum character are, are being bought by the city at the present time and they will be redeveloped in the same manner as the, uh, the five areas we were talking about. And how does this fit in with the whole of the city's plan? 
Well, there is a plan for the whole city, and all the outer areas were built between the wars under planning schemes. Uh, we're now dealing with the centre and all the amenities which were introduced into the outer areas, the roads and open spaces, will be extended into the centre. That shows a pattern of the parkways, the green parkways which were provided in the planning of the outer area, and you'll see that they're extended into the centre areas. When that is completed in years to come, it'll be possible for people to walk about the city on grass uh, without having to walk along the roads. And I think that's a very desirable object. Yes. Sir Herbert, this is a tremendous and exciting enterprise. Are people enthusiastic about it? Well, certainly the city council is enthusiastic and uh, people who understand the scheme are also very enthusiastic. Of course, it's difficult for those who are being disturbed, but uh, usually we find that when they get into their new environment or the new homes, they do get enthusiastic about the scheme. I think all of us realize that the important thing here is that it's a human problem. Uh, it isn't the bricks and mortar that matter, it's the people. <laughs> neighborhood to live in? Oh yes, very much. What do you think of the appearance of this place? Does it appeal to you? you like yes, I, I think it would be very nice after they finished all the loans and that, and it uh, will look quite nice. Well, Mrs. Badham, you're an old pensioner. Yes. How long have you lived here? Uh, four years. Uh, three years in, uh, in July. You find this a friendly place? Oh yes, very. The children are there. They've helped me a lot because uh, I haven't felt lonely while the children have been coming in and uh, and uh, they've been very very nice to me the, all the neighbors well now you live in a very high flat how many stories up six do you mind living so high no what do you like about your flat well uh, it's all convenient and it's and the doctor said that i was to have a place on the level because uh, me i wasn't very good you know and uh, i couldn't do the stairs you know we've got a lift here we've got a lift mm. well it looks a very nice little flat to me anything you dislike about it I don't dislike anything about it. I like it. I like it all, and uh, I've made myself uh, comfortable, and uh, and I wouldn't like to go now. Well, Mr. Mrs. Sweetman, do you like living here? Very much. We like it very much. Do you think it's a good idea having all this grass and trees around? Do you? Well, I like it because it gives you a nice outlook. Yes. Do you like these modern buildings? Do you like modern architecture, Mr. Sweetman? Very much indeed. I think it's uh, uh, really up to the back-to-back -back houses that we, we, we were used to. This is so great a change. Mr. Wallace, you've been caretaker here for three and a half years? Yes, yes, I have. Do you think most people like it here? Well, yes, I think most people do. Do you think there's a good neighbourly feeling here? Oh, definitely there, yes. Do you think the children who are living in a place like this are going to be better for it? Well, that's really hard to say, but um, I think they will in time, yes. The city has done its best to make it pleasant here. Do you think people are going to appreciate it and look after it? Oh, definitely, yes. I do. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Thank you. And here are some maisonettes, and below them, some tall blocks of maisonettes still to be built. Shepard Sidler, city architect, you're responsible for this. Yes, I am. Now, uh, what buildings have you put up so far in this bathroom redevelopment area? Well, as you can see, we've put up numbers of flats, houses, bungalows, and uh, maisonettes, in fact, a mixed development. And there's a lot of room yet. What other buildings are you going to put up? Well, there are about a thousand people here so far. We've another 5,000 or so to come. And uh, apart from 
new uh, shops, flats and so on, we've still got a lot of uh, housing to do. We have, for example, uh, a 16-storey block of flats, shortly to be built, uh, at the corner of the Bristol Road down there. And what's this? Well, this is a design for a new shopping centre. We have already some uh, small shopping centres built, but um, over there, when uh, those buildings are cleared, we're going to build this new uh, large shopping centre with a community centre and so on. Yes. Now, this school, where does this go? This is a new uh, secondary modern school, and you can already see the foundations for it uh, down there at the bottom of this uh, park strip. That park strip runs right across, does it? runs right through the whole of the housing, and these flats and will uh, look onto it. Yes. What do people think about the appearance of these modern buildings? Well, you know, <laughs> most people say, well, aren't they frightful or something like that? You know, an Englishman usually says that sort of thing to start with, but after a while, they get to, they, I think they get to like it. Lastly, what are you trying to achieve in the redevelopment areas? Well, fundamentally, we're trying to create a community here where people will feel happy and at home. Well, Christopher and David, how do you like your new home? Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. What do you particularly like about it? Well, we don't have to uh, boil every drop of water now, whereas in the old house we did. And uh, another thing is that uh, at the night time, we have a splendid view all over the city. It's so all little. It's a nice night, sir. Uh, yes, it is. What about you, then? Well, uh, I like the uh, fire because uh, once you light it, uh, uh, it keeps in all the night and keeps it nice and, uh, it's nice and warm. And also, we have a toilet to ourselves now, whereas in the other house, we had to share one and also walk across the yard. Do you find it a friendly place? Oh, yes, uh, because on the top floor, we have many friends up there. What do you think of the buildings? Are they too modern for you? No, they're not too modern. Anything you miss from the old place? No. no none, really. Good. Glad to get away, really. I'll say we're glad to get away, really. Good. Well, I don't want to keep you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Alderman Price, your chairman of the Public Works Committee, responsible for redevelopment in the city. Yes, that's right. Well, that must have cheered you up a bit, those remarks you heard. Yes, they're the people we're really looking after. Well, now, you've had a lot of experience, both of new building and living in slums. Do you think people are influenced by their surroundings? Yes, certainly I do. The, I think that we're trying here to improve their standard of living, both inside the home and outside. The kiddies there obviously appreciate it because they know that they're living in better conditions inside the house. One's got to remember that the sort of accommodation they lived in before, would, one would call caves, uh, holes in the wall. Not, uh, and, and they need to thrash around to exist, you know. You're not only interested in their creature comforts, you're interested in their whole surroundings, aren't you? Oh, yes, we, these open spaces that we're trying to provide are uh, uh, very interesting indeed. And uh, come on, I'll show you something. Now, this is what I was telling you about. I think you've been, you've, it's been explained to you that this is going to be an open park. The corporation were offered by a contractor to rent this for a scrap dump. But because of the effect upon the tenants of, of this property, we decided not to allow it to be used and to forego the income. Because we're very concerned about recreating the slum mine, if you see what I mean. Well, that's very interesting. Now, may I change the subject? 
Do you think that people with young families ought to be made to live in flats? Very difficult on the space that we've got, I agree. I, I'm not too happy about it. But at least with these flats, these large flats in redevelopment areas, there, there is plenty of open space around them, which helps a great deal. Now, are there any alternatives? I know that Birmingham has tried to persuade neighbouring towns to take some of its population, but is there anything else that can be done? Well, there's talk, of course, about building in muse-type development, but I'm not too happy about that. There seems to be something missing in the new estates. They don't have several generations of the same family living nearby. Yes, there's a problem there, of course. I agree, the old central areas, uh, everybody's li living next to everybody, as it were, where they meet at the local grocery store where auntie and, and the son and, uh, and daughter can uh, meet and discuss their own problems, and they're very close together. But it's not too bad here, but there is a problem there, even so. Well, now, how are people reacting to all that's being done? Well, the reaction's uh, uh, pretty good, of course, but let me show you something down here, a new school that we're going to build. Now this is the land I was telling you about upon which the school is to be built. It will be built in an undulating parkland. And I'm hoping, and I believe it will be true, that Birmingham will be one of the most beautiful cities in Europe when this redevelopment job is completed. Now over here you can see some of the type of property in which I was born. Slum property. It is my ambition that no one ever will be brought up in houses like this ever again. Wish you wanted my love, baby 